Hello everybody, Cone here. Today we are back in automation, but I'm going to do something a little different. Uh, I'm not going to go with the scenario, I'm actually going to go into the sandbox, which is basically where you can just make any engine you desire. There's no rules or restrictions uh, unless you set them yourself. And what I want to do is go through and recreate some engines from the um, US version of the S13 chassis 240SX and maybe some JDM options as well. Um, the 240SX is very uh, familiar to me. I have owned six of them uh, ranging from 88 to 92. Huge range there and they've all been hatchbacks. But I have a huge appreciation for them and uh, and I have a plethora of essentially useless information that I know about them that uh, I figured I could put to use here and and recreate some of those engines for you guys and we're gonna start out with the engine that the 240SX first came with over here and that is the KA24E um, which is a single cam four cylinder so let's start we'll just go down the line here four cylinder cast iron block uh, the bore is an 89. Let's see if I can. Nope. Okay, there we go. And the stroke is a 96. But I could go a little faster. Uh, so let's go up. So you can see it's a pretty long stroke motor. And that gets you to 2.389 liters. Or as they round it off to. 2.4 liters, which is why it's called the 240SX. I'm not 100% sure on the crank. I'm gonna go with cast iron. I know uh, it's one of the weaker parts of the engine. Uh, the connecting rods are cast and the pistons are as well. So nothing fancy down there. And uh, that's that's kind of the kind of the theme of that engine or these engines. They're not the K's in general. They're not uh, particularly fancy motors. Um, this one is overhead cam, three valves per cylinder, and uh, that's, um, I'll have to check, yeah, I think this is the, actually the exact uh, configuration that I would have too, so that works out, large uh, exhaust valve on it, so the compression. Um, that's something that changed over the years. Uh, 88 and early nine or, or bleh, 88 and early 89s came with 9.1 to one compression. Uh, 90 and or late 89 and 90 they went down to 8.6, but they rated both motors at the same horsepower. So who who knows? I think I think the 9.1s were a little bit more on the stout side. Cam profile. Uh, this is something I have discussed with a couple of the devs about why uh, why there is not an exact cam profile option here. You know, you got the slider and it just, it just works out better as far as the game is concerned to do it like this rather than having, say, having to input the duration and the and the um, exact specifications of what the cam lobes would be. Um, so with that, you can't get if you're trying to recreate a motor, you can't get exactly spot on, but you can you can kind of rough guesstimate just based on on what you know about it. And I do actually know that the single cams had a had a 240, 248 cam profile, uh, 240 intake, 248 exhaust. So that's a that's a moderately aggressive setup, really, um, and is one of the things that uh, I owned a single cam to begin with, and it it was it seemed like it was really opened up at the bottom end, and I think that somewhat of an aggressive cam profile helped with that, but it was also a very um, rough kind of not smooth running engine as well, so that could have had something to do with that. So I'm gonna go with a 42. And uh, I know what kind of numbers this motor should be putting putting down, so that that could be tweaked later on. 
Um, that's one thing I forgot to do. I'm going to take the year down to uh, 88 or 89. I may have to change that if, if it interferes with some of the options, but that will keep us from doing anything that we couldn't have done. Uh, no VVT, no VVL. Right, Style-wise, I don't think there's a lot of options for single cams. Let's see. Nope, just the one. But, um... It came with... Well, it was black, so I guess that might work. It was black, powder-coated, like that, with a wrinkle. So, yeah, that works. Um, one thing... One thing that's gonna be not exactly the same and it's just something that's not modeled in this and it's probably not necessary to be modeled in this is the fact that this is a timing belt engine and all KAs and and a large majority of engines nowadays are timing chain so it doesn't change a whole lot in the characteristics of it but if they were ever looking for something you know to add more dimensions to to technologies and lifespan, reliability, whatnot to engines, uh, being able to choose between timing belt and timing chain is, is something that could uh, add some of that. Aspiration, these were NA motors. Um, some people say that's why the 240SX is the worst of these SGIC platforms, um, because in the US we didn't get any turbocharged motors, just the NAKAs which is pretty much only a, a US market motor. I don't think they ever put that in their Japanese cars that I know of. Now we're already on the fuel system. In 88, you know, uh, multi-point um, EFI had pretty much taken over. So I'm gonna actually bump this up until multi-point comes up and that is 93. 92 so so we'll go with 92 even though it's not accurate um, it did have multi-point so I guess they're a little ahead of the curve there actually that's a very good uh, representation of that it looks very similar to it um, single we'll just do a standard intake since we're we're replicating the the stock engine here and it ran on over here it runs on 87 that's not an option but we'll go with regular 91 Okay, uh, fuel mixture is another thing. You know, you can't really pinpoint that. Who knows what it, what the FRs were on a stock motor. Um, I'll, I'll try and look it up, but I don't think that's anything I'm going to find. So for now, we're just going to do kind of a middle of the road. Uh, let's see, maybe a 13. Uh, timing. Timing is on a stock motor is actually very not aggressive. Uh, a lot of people when they get a 240 and they start modifying, one of the things they do is they, they will bump timing and try and, and get, to, get that a little bit more aggressive, but usually that involves uh, going up a grade on fuel. Uh, RPM limit, let me look that up real quick. Stock rev limit was 6500 RPM. So we'll go with that. And from my experience, 6,500 RPM is about all you want to do with this motor. Not just because, um, well, they didn't make much power up high, but they didn't. They were just, like I said earlier, they were not very smooth engines. So uh, they didn't. It just. It starts making those noises that make you cringe a little bit when you get up in that high RPM. Uh, stock motor came with a good old cast log. Was it short cast? Yeah, I'll say it was short cast. Hey, hey, that's going the wrong way. It should be going this way. None of this front wheel drive under the oil pan shenanigans. <laughs> um, that, not important, obviously. That's that's just the only option we have at this point. Okay, so exhaust. I want to say they came with a two and a quarter exhaust system. Uh, simple two-way cat, and they came with a had a resonator and a muffler. So I'm gonna go with straight through for the first one and a baffled for the second. I think that'll 
pretty adequately uh, represent it. So there we go, there's a KA24E, or at least what I, I hope is going to be uh, similar to it. Uh, KA24E put out, the SAE rating was 140 horsepower, 140 horsepower at 5600 RPM, and 152 foot-pounds of torque at 4400 RPM. So let's just go into test mode for now, make sure everything's working all right. Is it running? I can't even hear it. All right. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> that actually kind of surprised me. I didn't, what, what was happening there? Okay, now uh, both the pistons and the bottom end freaking out. Probably because of that uh, long stroke. So let me go to the bottom end. We'll go. Let's see. Hmm. I guess heavy duty cast and heavy duty cast pistons. I mean, all I know is that they're cast, so uh, they're not cheap motors. So I guess they could have been quote unquote heavy duty. And the running joke is that they're truck motors because uh, that motor was also featured in the in the Nissan hard body pickup. So <laughs> the, the running joke is that yeah, it's a truck motor in the 240. So we'll try that out. All right. Nope. Ow. Ow. That seemed worse. 4,000 RPM, it's, it's complaining. Well, let's go back to the bottom end. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do is actually just increase the quality. And I'm wondering if it's the, possibly the year. Oh, that's one it didn't do. Ah. See, they, they were cast, cast iron blocks, but they're actually aluminum heads. I don't know why I just remember that, but it just caught my eye. So that was one thing that was a little wrong. So there we go. Let's see. Let's see what that did. It's a little happier. See, 5500. But then it's starting to try and break. And so it did. Okay. Let's see. I don't know if that crank's gonna do anything. No, because it wasn't. That wasn't complaining at all. No. Hmm. So let's quality it all the way up. Apparently, this motor never could have existed. Well, that made it live. So uh, I guess that's something. <laughs> Bottom end part is MTBF. I've never seen it say that. That must be uh, new wording there. I wonder what that means. I'll have to look that up. Okay, so what can I do? I guess go to forged, even though it didn't come with forged pistons. It didn't come with forged con rods, that's for sure. Be nice if it did. So yeah, now everybody's happy. But that's not accurate, so we're gonna go back down to uh, just the cast and uh, keep the tech, keep the quality up. Let's go to test mode and see what it does. Well, a little short on power. Torque's coming up pretty well. well inefficient on the bottom end. Uh, still. Ah, what the heck? Let's go ahead and, and do forged. Uh, even though we know it's not completely uh, correct, it looks a little better than having the quality up exorbitantly. Okay. Um, gonna go with a little bit more on the cam profile. Not not much else I can do. Hmm. So 
so it's definitely um, definitely a little short on power from what uh, Nissan says they did. We all know that's not always accurate, though. Alrighty, so owner is supposed to be making. Uh, oh, it's actually reaching its RPM limit, so that's that's bizarre. Okay. Uh, anyway, getting distracted. The motor is supposed to make 140 and 152. It's making it's making 133, so that's not terribly off. Uh, it's actually making it pretty late, so that means that the cam is probably too aggressive. Let's see, and I guess there's not a whole lot I can do with this. Um, I got some room in the octane, so let me try and lean it out. I can run a little more efficiently, if anything. So here's the big thing. It's a uh, it's a heavy motor. 316 pounds for a for a four cylinder. Kind of a kind of a downer. Well, that took that took way more power. So let's go up to a 50, 55 maybe. Okay, now we're getting into the charts. See that shakiness? Yeah, that looks about right for a single slammer. Okay, uh, 34. A little short on torque, but still, the power is now up there. So there we go. 142 horsepower, 134 foot pounds. That's a little short of what it, I think it should probably be doing. Uh, the lifespan, or the MTBF. Miles? I don't know what that stands for. Uh, uh, again, I'll look that up. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Octane actually came down. That's interesting. Oh, because of the cam. Perhaps. Okay. So that's that's one down. Next up, uh, okay, let me hold save this. Done. Is that in there now? Yes. Okay, new engine. Next up's gonna be virtually the same motor. Gas block. Um, 89. I wish you could just input that value. 89 by 96. I'm gonna go with forged again just because I have to even though I know they're cast uh, the year on this one we'll say is about 95 they started making the ka24 de in 91 uh, and you can get it in 91 240 and they made that motor for a long time I want to say up until 05 or 04 uh, it was actually a really a really good motor and a lot of people like it uh, Tool overhead cam was the big change. So you got four valves per cylinder, and it is just like this cam on bucket design. Uh, compression, let's see, it's up to 9.5. So that's a pretty good little increase there. Uh, the, the cams, they changed from year to year. Uh, the early ones came with a 240 and a 242, I believe. That no, was a 232 and a 248. Um, a lot of people will like to switch those cams and put two exhaust sides in it. So you have a 248, 248. Uh, just to open that motor up a little bit more. So we're going to go again with a 50-ish. Uh, no VVT still, no VVL. Let's see. Got a few more options here. But this one actually looks pretty similar. And I'm going to make this one white just because I currently own one with a KA24DE in it and it is white. Uh, aspiration, still NA. Injection, multi point, standard intake, regular unleaded, pretty lean. Uh, again, the timing not terribly aggressive. That's one thing I didn't mess with the other one. Uh, the RPM limit came up a little bit. We can now rev these up to 7100. 
uh, that's when the rev limiter kicks in, but I'm gonna put it at seven because that's the actual red line. And honestly, you, you, you don't wanna do that with these motors if, if, if you're thinking about maybe buying a 240, that's my, my biggest recommendation is just keep it out of that real high RPM and it'll last a lot longer. All right, go short cast again, two and a quarter, two way, baffle or straight and then baffle, reverse flow. Actually, that may be what it was on the second muffler. So let me, I'll go back and revise the other one on the, on the single cam. All right, so test mode. Sounds a little better, ish, sort of. Everything's staying happy. Well, again with that bottom end. Yep. XRPM. So I have to increase the quality again. That's a little strange. That seems uh, that seems a little out of character for um, for real life. So that may need a little bit of tweaking. Makes it last, so that's good. So go into test mode, start it up. Now this one came up to uh, the torque pretty good. This motor is supposed to be doing one, 155 horsepower and 160 foot pounds of torque at 5400 RPM and 4400 RPM respectively. At the, wow, that's that's pretty close. So the power is coming a little later than it should, but really, that's it's, that's pretty darn close to uh, the real specs. So I think we're done with that one. Uh, actually, let me increase that timing a little bit. See if I can. There we go, 160. <laughs> now it's... Oh, wait, no, I have that backwards. Now it's making too much power, not enough torque. Oh, well. So that's... That's the KA24DE, a motor I have a ton of experience with, and I think is a really solid motor for that platform. 240s are, are real light, and... <clears throat> oh, I, I did it again. Didn't, didn't choose the aluminum head. I don't think that's going to change anything. Well, that actually reduced the power for some reason. Alright, so save this one. Now, when I first started getting into uh, 240s, right in the era where the SR20 from Japan and the Sylvia or the 180SX or a multitude of other cars had just started getting real popular as far as swapping into the US models uh, it was it was the hot hot ticket you put an SR in a 240 you got the coolest thing in town <laughs> uh, I personally never got into it I know a lot of people that do and they have a lot of success with that motor so let's uh, let's build one of those as well even though it never came in our car um, a good portion of them now have them one thing that's that's really cool about the SR or cool to an nerdy person like me is it's one of the only completely square engines that uh, that was made and it is just happens to be well it's an aluminum block and it happens to be 86 by 86 so the game already knew what motor I was gonna make uh, here on this one about the same era so we'll say 94 uh, 93 um, came with a again with the cast conrods and whatnot so I'm gonna try that and see if maybe because it's a square engine it's a little happier with that uh, oh, cast iron crank top end dual overhead cam four valves per cylinder aluminum head I remember this time uh, the compression hmm, I don't actually know that let me look that up okay got that figured out 8.5 to 1 uh, cam profile Mm, it's it's about the same as the K's. Uh, it's a little less aggressive, actually. So I'm going to go with the 45. Uh, the first gens, the 
red tops as they call them were no VVT, no VVL. Uh, later on, they did add that, and uh, among some other things, but uh, not in that first year. Those red tops were they were the ones that really started coming over here first, because uh, they were the easiest to acquire. But what everyone likes about the SR is that it came factory turbocharged. Came with a Garrett T twenty five G. Came with a small intercooler. Was a journal bearing, uh, not ball bearing, until the later years. And it was. I'm gonna start with an economy. <laughs> Let me see how that looks. Yeah, that's that looks about right. An economy turbo. It was a real small turbo. It didn't didn't make a whole lot of boost. Uh, uh, had some pretty good characteristics for that motor because it's a pretty small motor, two liters. Uh, a really good all-around car or all-around engine, I should say. Uh, it was multi-point injected as well. Standard intake. I would just like to note the the size of the intake versus the size of the intercooler piping. <laughs> Wowzers. Anyway, I uh, should have no problem with it uh, not getting enough air, huh? Uh, ran on premium. Just go middle of the road on the fuel mixture. Uh, ignition timing. Uh, we'll go middle of the road on that. I mean, I'm, honestly, I'm not as familiar with these motors as I am the, the uh, KAs. Oh, I forgot to do this, but that's actually a pretty good look for this motor. They didn't look too different from a from a K though. I'll go with this one. It's gonna be red. It's like a powder coated red. Yeah, just like that. Okay, so short cast hitter, and that's that's just what they were. I said they came with a 2.5 inch exhaust. At least that's what I'm thinking. Two way kit. And we'll do the same setup here. Oops. There we go. Alrighty. So, let me try this out. I think we may run into some bottom end issues. Okay. Everything looks good so far. Turbo's a little unhappy. And there goes the bottom end again. Yeah, so, uh... Hmm. There's not much I can do with that, except for I'm going with forged, so... Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get, uh, you know, 100% accuracy. For some reason, it's just not working out. Oops. So let's see. There we go. Everybody's happy now. Way down on power, though. Hmm. That could be the turbo. Let me... Let me run it through a full test and see what's what kind of numbers it's it's given me. Okay, so I've got some work to do. These motors put out two hundred and two horsepower from factory. I'm trying to maybe look into the turbo, see if I can find some specs on that. So I just did a little bit more research and I found out the AR ratio of that T25G was a 0.67. So we'll see what that does. Um, I don't think that's where our main restriction is though. Let's see, maybe increase the timing map. Oh, that's definitely not revving high enough. That's one thing. Because a SR20 TET. A SR20 DET redlined at 7,500. Uh, that's debatable among some people. Some people say 7,200. I'm going to do 7,500 for now. Uh, let's see what that does. Uh, but I know we're not getting into that 200 range. Boy, 
Something's really holding this thing back. Not too sure what it is. Exhaust? No, I've got plenty of pipe. Hmm. What is wrong? Alrighty, so I did a bunch more research on uh, the good old inter internet problem of too much information, not enough facts. <laughs> um, just so many different opinions on what size this T25G should actually be. I don't know uh, exactly what numbers I should be reading as far as what size the compressor and the turbine should be um, in the game here. Uh, these are two measurements I found on a site, but there was many other measurements to choose from. But they seem to have gotten me more into the range that we should be in, so I'm going to go with them for now. Uh, looking at it, it looks a little bit on the large size uh, for a stock turbo, but who knows? It's all relative. Uh, <laughs> uh, but let's see, go ahead and test it out. Should be a lot closer to that range we were looking for. Connect about 8 psi, which is, might be a little bit higher than stock. Connect to about 190 horsepower, so only 10 short at 6500 RPM. That's that's not too bad. That's uh, the torque's about right, so. Uh, overall, it's, that's pretty close. Uh, still having problems with that bottom end. That's something that uh, apparently I'm not going to get away from. But there we have it. There's an SR20DET red top version. Ready to go. I've renamed it and figured out how to rename the other ones. So one thing I'm noticing is that when you click in this box, it doesn't show you that you've clicked in that box. So. You can actually type in here, but it, it doesn't show you that you can, so I wasn't aware of it. So let's save that one. Go on back, and there we have it. We have the KA24DE, the KA24E, and the SR20DET. I should actually revise that. Put on there that it is the red top. All right. I uh, don't need this one anymore, so we can delete it, and I, apparently we can actually delete them now, it doesn't, the world does not end. Okay, so there we go. Okay, A24DE, KA24E, and the SR20DET red top. So what I'm going to do here is actually, I want to I wanna do more episodes like this where I'm just recreating some of these, uh, to me they're iconic, but to most people they're just average everyday engines, but I want to recreate some of these engines in this era of of early 90s mid 90s Japanese four cylinders six cylinders uh, this uh, it's kind of an early an early age I hate the term tuner but tuner engine uh, I want to make a catalog of those so that when whenever we do get like the uh, car designer or whatnot I'll have this whole cool catalog of of these 90s engines that uh, are of great interest to me to choose from so so I I would say next time I want to do maybe the, uh, the RB20, the RB25 uh, um, I know there's there's other ones like the CA18 which is a little older uh, just in the in the Nissan range and then you got uh, the whole Toyota 4AGE um, Obviously, the 2JZ, everybody knows that motor. It'd be really cool to kind of take a, a little trip down memory lane and, and rebuild those. So I hope you liked uh, hope you liked the episode and the format. Uh, if you have any suggestions on how to make these engines a little bit more accurate, please let me know. I'm no expert at this, so I'm open to any advice or suggestions. But uh, otherwise... My name is Cohen Dodger, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.